Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you um, online on the cloud today over Zoom. Um, Health.io, uh, founded seven years ago, and as dug by The Economist a couple of years ago, has ushered in or introduced the era of the medical selfie. What we do is basically take um, on-the-device smartphone cameras and transform them into clinical-grade scanners. The genesis of Health.io was in 2013-14 when we saw the exponential growth in smartphone camera capacity. This was fueled mainly through the Kim Kardashians of the world or pop culture, if you will, social media transitioning from text-based type interactions into image-based type interaction. It was clear to us at the founding team that smartphone cameras and the envelope around them, that is computation, cloud computing, bandwidth, are gonna to have to catch up with popular demand for ever stronger cameras. And our mission within that space would be to deliver clinical grade reads from a, a standardized smartphone camera. So when we were looking for that killer app or that medical process that we can digitize while leaving the medical system to move on at its own pace with its own systems, while we digitize an existing pathway that makes sense for many people, we had three criteria. We wanted it to be, the first test had to be a test that uh, addresses the need of a volume of, of people. So essentially not just a small niche market, but a, a diagnostic or a medical process that applies to millions or hundreds of millions of people. Secondly, obviously it had to be image-based. And third, we wanted to deliver clinical grade accuracy. And in going through that journey, we had that image of having everybody um, in this mall being served by our products. So not just the people who are going to some luxury uh, stores, not just the high-end out-of-pocket uh, communities, but population health. And so for the first product that made a lot of sense, we chose urinalysis. There are more than a billion urine tests conducted every year in the Western Hemisphere. Those are conducted across multiple uh, pathways. Predominantly 600 million tests conducted every year in the chronic wound, in the, sorry, in the chronic uh, uh, wound patient uh, domain. Around um, 300 million are done in the prenatal setting and over 100 million are done to diagnose and treat urinary tract infections. But the problem is that the system as we have it today really entails a cumbersome process in, in consuming this test. We get a doctor's order, we get in the car, we usually stand in traffic, we go to the uh, submission point, we take a cup, we go to a public urinal, which is not always the cleanest and nicest in, in, the, in the world, and then walk around with a hot cup of urine deposited for someone to pick it up from one of the centralized labs where it goes through a centralized process like that. Very cumbersome, very inefficient, very deterring from a consumer's perspective to actually make that time to go into the lab. And the result of which is that a lot of people just don't get tested. And this has to do with healthcare disparities. It has to do with access to healthcare. And our concept, remember the medical selfie was, can we turn the smartphone camera to such camera that can scan uh, urine tests with clinical grade accuracy at home? I'm happy to report that as of a couple of years ago, we've introduced a new clinical reality. What you're seeing on the screen is our app scanning a dipstick in a home environment delivering FDA cleared uh, results to a patient's home, sorry, from a patient's home to a patient's doctor. It's consumer centric, that is 99% usability uh, from the ages 18 to 80. Last week, we had a person the age of 93 years old conducting the test in the, uh, in the UK. Um, and it is more convenient for the patient, obviously. Net promoter scores around the globe um, are above 80. And that is a phenomenal achievement uh, we're, uh, we're, that keeps everybody happy at the company. We're very religious about measuring the net promoter score as it, as it is a vehicle for getting people to do the test and improving healthcare outcomes. So this is what it looks like. Say hello to Healthy IO. With Healthy IO's FDA approved smartphone urinalysis, patients can now do the same urine test at home. Get the stick, scan, Results go to the existing EMR. So we don't believe in second screen. Better outcomes, less effort, less stock. And we do not, and I'll say it again, we do not believe in healthcare disruption from the healthcare provider and payer perspective. We want to deliver those lab results from the patient's homes um, in the exact same manner in which systems and providers are used to doing that today. We don't believe in changing that pathway. 
who don't believe in changing the hierarchy of physicians or medical practitioners within the process. We simply want to allow the patient to do that at home with the strength of their smartphone camera on the basis of our <clears throat> sorry, cloud uh, technology. So we're serving the prenatal testing uh, community today. We're serving testing for kidney disease, or I'm going to share a case study today. We're sharing the UTI space, urinary tract infections, both in the B2C um, domain and, and capacity, as well as in the B2B2C capacity. And we're now venturing into the management of diabetic ulcers, ultimately, again, conducted today with rulers in uh, wound clinics worldwide. So how does it work? This is a picture from our back end. This is actually a single phone delivering two uh, radically distinct pictures. You can see this is a Samsung device delivering a gray image on the left and a uh, yellow colored image on the right. What our algorithm knows how to do is to normalize those in the back end across multiple cameras, multiple lighting conditions in people's homes. This is the robust capacity. This is the AI driver, the engine that enables all this fantastic uh, healthcare outcomes that we've been able to deliver for 150,000 paying customers over the last, I would say, six to nine months, as also the corona reality uh, picked up and, and home testing actually accelerated. So I've, I've mentioned before the average net promoter score above 80. That's across different uh, services and providers. We're very, very uh, uh, religious and, and are committed to uh, uh, managing the satisfaction of, of customers and consumers. Patients at the heart actually deliver uh, better healthcare outcomes uh, as the net promoter score goes up. What I wanted to share with you today in the clinical reality is our access into the domain of um, chronic kidney condition measurements. So 73 million people in the US alone are at risk of chronic kidney uh, disease. These are mainly people with diabetes <clears throat> and hypertension and some other diseases that are uh, fueling the growth of this uh, cost, which is already $114 billion uh, last year for the American taxpayer. The problem is that while there is a urine test that can actually predict very well the degradation of kidneys at an onset stage, which is cheap to treat, or I wouldn't say cheap, I would say cost effective, only 20%, that is two out of every uh, uh, 10 people that need to get tested actually do that. And the reason for that is, again, that cumbersome process. We're taking a person who's at risk, who is usually middle class, running, you know, making ends meet, two kids on average, trying to um, you know, go through life and asking them to do yet another lab test. And people find that very hard to make that lab visit. And as you can see, we're only at two out of 10. And the ramifications of that two out of 10 from a healthcare outcome perspective is that we know only about 18% of the people who have stage three chronic kidney condition. That is horrible. That is a very, very difficult situation for a healthcare system because stage four and stage five are already people with an inevitable, already practicing uh, dialysis. So we have stage one, two, and three to treat people, but on average, we know about 10% of them if you stack up stage one, two, and three. That is an unaccepted reality. And, and two years ago, we decided to go into that space called ACR, aldohyde creatinine uh, testing, and wanted to see if we can serve that uh, patient group, that cohort, in doing the tests at home. And what will happen to the adherence rate? So if I replace a visit to the lab, wake up in the morning, uh, take a, you know public transport or use my own car to get to a lab or a collection point, stand in line, do everything required, end up with two out of 10, what happens if I send the test kit to a patient's home? Well, what we found out is that you go from zero to above 50% with our home testing service. Testing service includes uh, plans that give us their selected risk of patients who haven't done the test in the last uh, year and a half. That is that 80%. We then send kids to all those 80%. We have a unique AI system that knows how to activ activate those folks. So patient activations um, that are personalized depending on uh, language, type of phone, and some other parts of that secret sauce that deliver us <clears throat> into getting more than 50% of those who haven't done the test in the last two or three years to do the test at home with a simple smartphone scan. Results go into the EMR. So again, no disruption in the process. We take patients at risk, we manage them automatically, send the kids to their homes and allow for them to do the test at home and then finalize with sending the results for proper follow-up to their physician. Results have been published um, in, uh, you know, obviously 
uh, peer-reviewed uh, magazines, our activity with um, Johns Hopkins and our activity with Kaisinger Health that has delivered 30 to 40% adherence and above has also been published. Um, and we're very, very proud of this service. <clears throat> in, the, uh, in the UK, we have delivered this service in a commercial setting, sorry, across um, the NHS and results are phenomenal. We're growing at scale with this service and are stepping into uh, the service also in the US. Our best partners in the US who've been with us um, all along the way are the National Kidney Foundation that actually see this process on record, this new service as the test that can help uh, millions of people. And I'm very proud to share with you today that we're partnering with the National Kidney Foundation on their national campaign that's now starting to be run as of September, asking people, are you one of the 33%? Bringing to people's consciousness the notion that they might have a kidney degradation, they might not know it, and the best way to find out is to test for protein, test that ACR test at home. The feature of this campaign is gonna be a kidney quiz where you'd be measuring for risk. At the end of that process, you'll be able to click a button, get our kit and know if you have a positive result for albumin and urine so that you can then go and get further checked um, and seek your physician's uh, consultation and advice. That's one of the beautiful assets that the National Kidney Foundation put out. Are you one of the 33%? Basically, in every traffic jam, in every parking lot, in every group of people, in every stadium that you will be, 33% of the people there at risk will have potentially an onset of chronic uh, kidney disease. We're very proud to partner with the National Kidney Foundation, the NHS, the, sorry, the ASN, the HHS, and our partners from the clinical um, and delivery perspective. This is really, really um, um, where we'll be coming into the US market in the next quarter. Um, to serve that purpose, um, those of you who might have followed our growth in the last uh, quarter, we've also acquired um, an American company, a Silicon Valley company that had um, similar hopes to deliver a service like ours. Uh, we're very happy to have acquired uh, Inuit Technologies and now have a robust base for American expansion. And as I said before, the last few months, the last, I'd say, six to nine months, rather, uh, as the corona reality, the COVID reality took shape, um, we've been able to serve a growing number of patients across Europe, now coming into the U.S., and get the vision of that medical selfie to be recognized both by hundreds of thousands of patients, but also um, the recognition of the media in the US and the amplification of that message. You don't need to disrupt. You just need to deliver and digitize services that make sense. We're seeing GoodRx now going for an IPO. We're seeing Levango, we're seeing other companies. This is the main, uh, I would say the main frame or, or the, the golden path of generating a difference in, creating a difference in the healthcare system is actually letting the system keep to its own habits but digitizing the areas that make most sense without, and I'll say it again, without disrupting the medical processes. So very happy and encouraged by recognition of Fast Company, by the Financial Times um, that put us top of their list on the Bold in Business um, uh, campaign earlier in March this year. And a couple of months ago, uh, CNBC put us on their Disruptor 50 list, which is a really great achievement for us in the sense of amplifying the message that healthcare, uh, can be delivered uh, by changing the means of delivery and serving the patients where it really makes most sense. So I'll leave that message with you and I thank you for the time. I invite you to uh, email us. I'm Yonatan at healthy.io. Um, the team here and in Boston, in London, in Singapore is committed to uh, scaling the business over the next couple of years so that we cross the 10 million people uh, number that would actually do ACR testing, UTI testing, and prenatal testing at home. We're growing really, really fast. We'd love to have you on board, uh, partner with you. And again, uh, thank you for the folks uh, in uh, Salt Lake uh, for inviting us. And it's a great pleasure to be part of the event. Uh, we look forward to uh, collaborating further. Thank you very much.